let's make a cover for a travel neck pillow so it stays clean and it's easy to carry. Welcome, I do sewing and DIY related content and today we are going to be making a cover for this little travel neck pillow I got off Amazon. So I absolutely love it, it's super comfortable, but it didn't have anything to kind of keep it clean while you're going through security and walking through the airport. So I have this knit fabric and what I've done is I folded it over so that it actually, you can see the fold on the right hand side and I just need to figure out how I want my pillow to go in. So I'm thinking I'm going to have it facing this way and then I'm just going to cut a rectangle so that this ends up being like one piece of fabric that's folded over. Over, and then I will just repeat that so that I get two pieces of fabric so I'll have one for the outside of the bag as well as a lining for the inside of the bag now if you're gonna be using a serger or you're gonna be finishing off your seams you may not need to add a lining I just decided to add one anyways so it would give the knit a little bit more substance since it is kind of a flimsy material so you could definitely just go with one layer if you wanted to for this or you could do both and have both that outside and the lining now it's time to sew up the sides of our bag. So you can see here I have the outer part of my bag. I'm going to be taking seams up both sides and then I'm going to leave a gap probably about two inches or so where this is going to be used for the drawstring. So I'm not going to be sewing that up. Then for my lining, I'm just going to be taking both straight seams up both those sides. Now for the outside portion, since that is that drawstring, if you are to using a serger, be sure that you are carefully leaving that gap and you're not cutting any of the fabric off. So I just kind of started from the bottom, went all the way up to a stopping point, and then I continued from the top. And then I repeated this on the other side, and then I also serged both that lining. So you can see here, I have the outer part done, and then I have that lining. But now what I need to do is on the lining, cut a little portion at the bottom so I can have a hole to turn this. And why we're doing this is we're gonna be sewing the top part to Together so that the lining and the outside come together but we're gonna need a hole to turn it so I'm just gonna cut a little hole right here and that's what I'm gonna be using to turn this entire bag so what I'm going to do now is basically combine these so that it's one full bag so I turned one portion of my bag right side out and then I'm going to combine these so that the right sides are together so the right side of the lining is touching the right side of the outer portion of the bag and I'm going to then pin around the top of the bag so that I can take that seam all the way around. Now, if you're using a serger, you can definitely just serge all the way around this. But if you are using a sewing machine this whole time, be sure you've been using like a stretch stitch. Now, if you've also been using a knit for, to make your bag, I found quilting clips really helpful as it just kind of held the knit much better than pins would and just kind of kept everything in place. But you could definitely use whatever you wanted to for this as long as you are taking into account the stretch of your fabric as well as that you need to go through and take some sort of seam. So here you can see that I have it all pinned up and I just went ahead and serged the entire thing. So you could definitely serge this. If you wanted to just use a regular sewing machine, you could do that as well. Being sure that you had some sort of like ballpoint needle for the knit fabric and then that you also were taking into account that you needed a stretch stitch as you will be stretching and opening this when you put your pillow in. So you wanna make sure that it doesn't break at any point. Then when you get to the end, be sure if you're using a serger not to serge into that completed seam from earlier. Once you have it all sewn up, however way you choose, you're just going to turn this right side out. So pulling that fabric through that hole we made earlier and then just lay it all nice and flat so that you can see what your bag ends up looking like. So here's what my bag looks like. Now what I'm going to do is it's time to top stitch around the top as well as make that little tube for our drawstring to go into. So what you see here is that I actually have the drawstring holes on the side and I've kind of folded them in on themselves and I'm just going to take a straight seam for either one of those so I have my stretch stitch on so that it will have a little stretch and give but this is just going to make it look a little cleaner I'm not going to have to worry about that raw edge as I am you know using my bag and then once I got that for both sides I did go ahead and just top stitch all the way around as well as sew that little opening so that there would be a tube for my drawstring so the last stitch we really have to do for this is close up that hole that we had at the bottom. So I went ahead and just hand stitched this. You definitely could have searched it. You could have done whatever you wanted to close it up though. I just found hand stitching easier. Also, as you'll see in a little bit when we test out if this bag actually works for what our pillow is, the bag ended up being a little bigger than I was expecting. I think in some cases a bigger bag would have been nice. You could have held more things, but I ended up making this a little shorter. To test everything out though, I did go ahead and just put my drawstring through. And since I wanted this to be like that drawstring effect, I put both ends, so as you can see, on one side. So that opening, I have both the left and right end and I'm pushing them through so that they go through the bag. And then so on one end, you see I have this loop 
and then on my other end I have both edges of what I'm using for my drawstring. So I'm just going to take a knot right here so that I can kind of make this be one continuous piece. In using this bag I didn't find the knot to be annoying or anything. If that is something you were concerned about, I did cut off the tassels as I did not need them. I also made sure the knot was very tight and then once I was good to go I just went through and cut it and then since this was not like a vinyl material I didn't have to worry about burning or anything. And then now it was time to test out does the pillow fit in the bag. And this is where I was kind of talking about earlier. It was a little big for me. So what I'm going to do is I just took a straight serger stitch um, so that it would be a smaller bag. So of course everything now is an optional step, but I did want to include this in case anyone else like me and your bag ended up being a little too big for what you wanted. It's very simple to make this smaller. Just line your pillow up on the bag so you can see how much fabric you need to take off. And then I just took that straight serger stitch along the bottom. And since it was the lining and that the serger does make it, you know, nice and clean and neat, I didn't have to worry about having a raw edge. And now I can put my pillow in and it fits much better. It is much smaller than what it was before. And I think that this is actually gonna work out really well for my needs. The pillow is nice and protected in this cover. I don't have to worry about getting dirty going through TSA and it's gonna be the perfect travel companion. The best part is that this bag is now machine washable since there's no raw edges, you have to worry about coming undone or fraying. You could take this on your trip, then wash it, then be able to reuse it again. If you like this video and you wanna see more, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. I have an Etsy shop as well, so check out that link in the description box. Thanks for watching.